Hi Liam, Dr. Ingalls here. I'm going to do my best to describe um, the ulnar paradox as per your question. It's just something that's easier done on video, so I hope this helps. Um, when we look at the ulnar paradox, remember that um, any sort of ulnar nerve damage or any damage to the um, nerve supplying the intrinsic muscles of the hand, we have the lumbricals and the interossei, which allow this sort of motion, flexion at the metacarpal phalangeal joints and extension at the interphalangeal joints. So if he loses innervation, there's a tendency for the hand to want to go into extension at the metacarpal phalangeal joints and flexion at the interphalangeal joints because of the um, lack of balance in the muscles there. Because it's the ulnar nerve which supplies most of the intrinsic muscles of the hand, but not the median nerve, the median nerve does the two lumbricals over on this side. So that's the reason it's not a true claw hand. It looks more like this. And ignore the thumb. I'm just trying to get you a good view of the uh, two fingers there. So this would be an ulnar nerve injury at the wrist because the intrinsic hand muscles are lost, but our long digital flexors go all the way up to the end of our fingers and are able to make this claw hand deformity. Here's the issue with the ulnar paradox. If the damage is much further up at the level of the elbow, then I lose my flexor carpi sorry, my flexor digitorum profundus on the ulnar side. Now if you remember, those are going to be the muscles that go all the way to the end of the digits and cause distal interphalangeal flexion. So if it's a more proximal injury, I lose that muscle and I can't flex the distal interphalangeal joint anymore. So this is the big difference and really the only difference in a proximal versus distal. Proximal injury, loss of flexion of the interphalangeal joints. Distal injury, I still have that flexor digitorum profundus and so I have more clawing. So, proximal injury, less clawing. Um, distal injury, more clawing. Proximal, less clawing. Distal, more clawing. That's the entire thing with the ulnar paradox. And the other thing to note is, do not get it confused, that's a contracture position. The difference there, that's uh, passive, so you're going to see that no matter what. Um, when you're talking active, that hand of van addiction, that's because of a loss of function over on this side. And so consequently, the hand of benediction is a median nerve injury. Okay, hopefully that helps you. If there's anything else, just send me an email, let me know, and I'll try and do some further explanation. Enjoy your studies.